all right guys welcome to completing the square it's another method of solving quadratic functions now the big thing you have to realize is that when we have quadratics that are in perfect squares we can use the square root property to find x and that's the whole idea of this lesson we're going to complete the square so that we can use the square root property to find x okay so these first two examples are perfect squares and i'm just reviewing how to use a square root property so in the first one you have solve x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 36. So the first thing you would try to do on the left is factor. Two numbers that multiply to be 9 and add to be 6 are 3. So we have the quantity x plus 3 squared and that's going to be equal to 36. Now you solve for x. You're going to square root both sides and that frees up the x plus 3. You know when you have a square and you square root it you undo that operation. And we're going to, that's going to be equal to plus or minus 6. So don't forget, when you square root 36, plus or minus 6 there. And now solving for x, we just subtract 3 from both sides, and you have negative 3 plus or minus 6. So negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9, and negative 3 plus 6 is 3. So those are your two solutions. And the process of the square root property is right here. You just took the square root to solve for x, and that's what it is. Taking the square root of both sides to, to solve for x. Uh, on the left or on the right here, solve x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 27. So that's x minus 5 squared, and that's going to be equal to 27. You square root both sides. Again, you have x minus 5 equals plus or minus root 27. So root 27, that's not a perfect square. And to solve for x, you add 5 to both sides, and I simplify the root 27, plus or minus 3 root 3. So these are just reviewing what the square root property is. Okay, it's just a method to solve quadratics. So the big thing here is that not all quadratics are perfect squares. So if they're not perfect squares, we still want to try to use the square root property to find x. So by completing the square, we're actually taking a trinomial, a quadratic that is not a perfect square, turning it into a perfect square so that we can use this property. That's the idea. And there's three steps to this method. First, you identify your B term and you take half of that. Secondly, you square that term. Third, you add that result to both sides of the equation if possible. So it's a really quick process to complete the square. You identify B, you take half of that and square it, and then you add it to both sides. It's a really quick process. Once we've done that, then we can we have a perfect square and we can use the square root property to solve for x. Now in this first example, all we're saying is find, uh, find the square here such that the following is true. So we're actually going to complete this square. Okay, we're not going to solve it, but completing the square entails finding b. So if we look here, b is 16. That's step number one. What is b? Take half of that. So you have half of 16, which is 8. That's all process number one. Number two says, well, take that answer and just square it. So I square 8, and I get 64. And step three is adding that to both sides. So if you look at this whole process, okay, uh, x squared plus 16x plus this box is going to equal 9. Well, half of b squared, we've identified 64 has to be added to both sides, and I've done that in red here. Now, this is a perfect square. So I've completed the square. The trinomial should be a perfect square. It is. Two numbers that multiply to be 64 and add to be 16 are 8. So you get the quantity x plus 8 squared equals 73, and I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to solve it. I just wanted to find that square, and it's 64. S example 2. Find c such that x squared minus 10x plus c is a perfect square. So again, same process. Instead of having that square, we have the variable c. Step number one, identify b, take half of it, square that, and add it to both sides if necessary. So b is negative 10. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Part 2, square that result. Negative 5 squared is 25. So C in this case is 25. We don't have to add it to both sides. We're just identifying C. C is the value that makes X squared minus 10X a perfect square. Now, here we're going to solve a quadratic using 
the completing the square method. Now, we didn't mention this before, and we're going to mention it now. When you complete the square, make sure that x squared plus bx is isolated. No constant with it. And notice how the coefficient is 1, and that's going to be important. So in this first step, all I did is subtract 11 from both sides, or add 11 to both sides. Okay, so that should be 11 there. And so now I have my x squared plus bx squared term on one side. So the whole process again is taking half of b and squaring it and adding it to both sides. That's completing the square, and that's what I did here in black. Okay, half of my b value, half of 10 is 5. Square that, which is 25, and add it to both sides. So in black here, that's just half of b squared, and if you go down here, that's 25. So that's completing the square. Once you've done that, you should, or you will, have a perfect square for the quadratic, which I do, which is x plus 5, that quantity squared equals 36. Okay, simplifying both sides, I square root both sides. The square root of 36 is plus or minus 6, and you subtract 5 from both sides. So you get negative 5 plus or minus 6. So five, negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And those are the solutions. Now on this board, it's a little more complicated because you have an a value that's not 1. So we're going to solve 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 equals 0 by completing the square. First, divide everything by a. My a value is 2 because I want x squared. No a value other than 1. So that's what I did here. I divided every term by 2. So now we have fractions. But look, we have three terms here. That 5 halves has got to go. It's got to go to the other side. I just want x squared plus bx on one side. So in this third line here, that's all I've done. I've subtracted off the 5 halves. You might be looking at the fractions saying, oh, I can't do fractions. But the, the, the whole process is the same. It's identifying your b value, which is negative 7 halves. Taking half of negative 7 halves, that's negative 7 fourths. Part 2, squaring that result, negative 7 fourths squared is 49 sixteenths. And now adding that to both sides, which is what I've done here. Once you've gone through that process, this is a perfect square. So you have x minus 7 fourths squared equals 9 sixteenths. And now we use the square root property. Square root both sides. And I have x minus 7 fourths equals plus or minus uh, 3 over 4. So x equals 7 fourths plus or minus 3 over fourths, which is 10 fourths or 5 halves. And x could be 7 fourths minus 3 fourths, which is 4 fourths, which is 1. So it's a little more challenging with an a value other than 2. Just make sure you divide out by a first, and then make sure that x squared and bx term is alone on one side. In our last slide, solve x squared plus 8x plus 22 equals 0. The a value is 1, which is good, but I've got that 22 on the same side, so subtract off 22, which is what I've done. There's my x squared plus bx term alone. And in green here, that's the process of completing the square. Identify b, take half of 8, which is 4. Step 2, square that result, which is 4 squared, which is 16 and then add it to both sides, which is what I've done right here. I've got the perfect square on the left side. I go ahead and factor that. I get x, the quantity x plus 4 squared equals negative 6. And we did this example because now we're going to have a complex solution. Square root both sides, you get plus or minus i root 6, and that's equal to x plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides will give you your x value, so you get negative 4 plus or minus i root 6, and that is your solution. So that's completing the square. It's another method for solving quadratic functions. We use it. We complete the square so that we can use that square root property. Okay? A couple key things. Make sure that the x squared plus bx term, is; those terms are on one side alone. If a is other than 1, divide it out. The process of completing the square is identifying b and taking half of it, squaring that result, and adding it to both sides of the equation. If you guys have any questions or comments about completing the square, you can type them below or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov.